Welcome to Blue Talks. Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? Heard some amazing talks and I hope that you enjoy. So, by a show by, of hands, who here has heard the phrase, your thoughts create your reality? Thank you. And who here has heard the phrase, where your thoughts go, energy flows? And who here would like to attract something better for themselves. I use a double hand for that. Today I'm going to share the golden ticket of success in manifesting a different reality. A reality that brings you what you desire in your life. Are you ready to hear this? Okay. Then here it is. The secret to manifesting a better, richer, more fulfilling reality is, and I'm going to quote Joe Dispenza, that before you can bring yourself to a better reality, a reality you desire to have, you have to change your personality. You have to change your state of being. You have to transform how you feel, think, and act. Let me get, let me re be even stronger, folks. The reason we don't manifest what we want in our lives is that we haven't fully committed to the truth of living, the truth that our thoughts have consequences. What does that mean? And how does it relate to your journey to self-love? Let's start at the beginning. When we took our first breath, we were for the most part pure and innocent. Influenced by the words, thoughts, and projections by those around us, we began to develop our negative and limiting beliefs about ourselves and our abilities. Keep in mind what I'm not talking about is the very, very credible philosophical and spiritual beliefs of reincarnation or being reborn. These limiting and negative beliefs began to mold us into the children, young adults, and adults that we have grown into. And unless we intervene on our own behalf, we will live out a default future. Some are lucky enough to have people in their lives who saw the development of the child self and who took action to support it, including, as needed, healing from a variety of modalities. But for the majority of us, we weren't the recipients of that kind of insight. So we continued down our lives paths, thinking, acting, and doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. Here's the rub, folks. If you continue to have the same talk, bring the same feelings into your experiences, you will make the same mistakes and you will never crack the code. And it will be as Einstein says, the consciousness that created the problem can't be the consciousness that can solve it. So you're living your own version of Groundhog Day. Are you aware that no circumstances begin outside ourselves. Everything begins within. Our inner world creates our outer world. So why not make your sense of self the best self it can be? As Jim Rohn, I'm sorry, my, my, there we go. As Jim Rohn says, you must take personal responsibility. You can change the circumstances you can't change the circumstances, you can't change the seasons, you can't change the winds, but you can change yourself. That is something you have charge of. And my intention, excuse me, in my 20 years of experience, I have worked with hundreds of people from across the globe. I have been trained in over 35 healing modalities, and I'm here to, today to talk to you about taking your initial steps to, on your journey to self-love. My intention for you is that something I say will resonate within you. My desire is that what you hear today 
is something that can help you in your process of releasing limiting beliefs to learn not only to forgive others, more importantly, to forgive yourself. These two topics will be the catalyst for you to begin to accept yourself, as I say, warts, wrinkles, and all. And they're all prerequisites to your journey to self-love. So to this end, I created Marla Goldberg's Scale of Self-Love. And as you'll see on my scale, the lowest existence on this scale is self-loathing, otherwise known as self-hatred. Self-loathing is intensified by anger, low self-esteem, feelings of not being enough, not being worthy, and toxic shame, to name but a few. I don't need a show of hands, but I want you to ask yourself, do any of these characteristics that I have mentioned or that you see on this scale describe you to some degree? When you live your life loathing yourself, yes, you can achieve professional success. You can do well for others, but at the end of the day, the self-talk will continue in your mind and you'll hear things something like, I'm not good enough. I don't fit in. They're so much better than I am. I'm such an idiot and I'm not lovable. This negative self-talk reinforces your feelings that you're not enough, not worthy, and that you don't feel that you're deserving. Self-loathing is usually rooted in some degree of dysfunctional dynamics or trauma. And what I mean by trauma is not the worst case scenario that you can imagine. Even a child being shouted at can be traumatized for the rest of his or her life. It could come from your family, from other people's judgments and criticisms, such as teachers, religious leaders, from those you hang around with personally and professionally. Even worse is that most people don't realize how powerful their thoughts are. The truth is, what we get in life is based on where we put our attention, energy, and focus, whether we want it or not. This means what you do, think, or say goes out into the ether and comes around like a boomerang. And that's with both good and bad things. Do you know anyone who is constantly stating how broke they are? how they hate their job, how they're miserable there, how they can't lose weight or something along those lines? And if so, what was the outcome of their statements and their thinking? The major in the majority of cases, without changing their thoughts, actions, or self-talk, nothing changes. We must intervene and convert our self-limiting talks to self-empowering thoughts. We need to go from self-limitation to self-empowerment. That's why as you work through and heal the energies and emotions on the lower rungs of my scale to self-love, you will begin to see your personality, to sh excuse me, shift your personality, how you think, how you feel, how you act, and your self-talk. For example, what if you were sitting here today thinking to yourself, this talk is really lame. I already know all this stuff. I don't like her style. Well, those thoughts will limit you and it will close you off to personal growth. If I took this to an extreme, in your life, if you're in your life, you are constantly hypercritical of others and most likely more than that, yourself, it reflects a, self, a lack of self-love. Note that this is one of those things that lie underneath the surface that you don't even know is going on. Conversely, if you're sitting here saying, I like what she's saying. I am getting so much out of what she has said so far. Well, that's an example of an empowering thought, an empowering belief. You have received what I have had to say so far and you're empowered by it. Joe Vitale says it this way, the meaning you give us to a situation, whoop, I don't know what happened to Joe Vitel. The meaning you give to a situation you perceive as negative reflects the limiting belief that has its hold on you. When you find the core of that belief and change its meaning, you change the energy around it, stepping into your own personal power. I quoted Jim Rohn earlier in this talk, but he has so many insightful things that I want to share another 
quote that more or less summarizes what I'm saying to you this morning. If you want to have more, you have to become more. For things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. If you improve, everything will improve. If you grow, your money will grow, your relationships, your health, your business, and every external effect will mirror that growth in equal correlation. Don't ask that things get easier. Ask that you get better. In my best-selling book, My Effing Long Journey to Loving Myself, A Guide to a Shorter Path, I not only share my journey, but offer instruction on releasing the emotions that we tend to repress and bury, forgiveness of others, and forgiveness of, more importantly, of ourselves, self-appreciation practices that will assist and support you on your journey to achieving self-love by releasing the heaviness and the toxicity of shame, guilt, bitterness, and repressed emotion, our anger, you begin to open your heart center and receive support, compassion, generosity, bringing you the love from others to ultimately the love of yourself. The next phase in our journey, in your journey to self-love is to work on forgiving the people that have harmed and shamed you. The beautiful thing about forgiveness is that they don't have to be in the room. You don't have to be face, in, face to face with those who have harmed and shamed you. I, excuse me. Um, but, you, but you can give your forgiveness anyway. Many people have said to me, I don't want to let them off their hook. So know what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're letting them off the hook. No. By forgiving another is not letting them off the hook or not letting them get away with their wrongdoing. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself and it helps to heal and unburden yourself from the toxic emotions that anger and re resentment cause. And I'm gonna repeat that again. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself to heal and unburden the from the toxic yourself from the toxic emotions and energy that resentment cause. In addition, I offer direction on ways you can forgive yourself. Now this might seem a little intimidating, but when you put a different perspective on the words, incidences, or negative self-talk that has been hindering your life's flow, you will be gabsmacked by the incredible shifts that you will begin to encounter. You may have heard what I'm about to say, but I feel it needs to be discussed here today because it's a vital part of your ability to manifest the life you desire. And the topics are your thoughts and gratitude. And to quote Mr. Einstein again, the world we have created is a product of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. If we want to change the world, and that can be your own personal world, we have to change our thinking. No problem can be solved from the same consciousness that created it. We must learn to see the world anew. Our thoughts are powerful probably the most powerful parts of the human anatomy. The majority of the ways we think, which really drives our behavior, is created by the subconscious, which, as cell biologist Bruce Lipton states, is largely formed by the age of six. Lipton also says that you cannot change the subconscious mind by just thinking about it. That's why the power of positive thinking doesn't work for most people. The subconscious mind is like a tape player. It will not change until you change the tape. What Bruce Lipton has discovered is that it's important to heal the traumas and dramas that we have experienced before the unhealed areas create disease or dis-ease. Another Bruce Lipton quote states that 5% of disease results from genes. 95% comes from something else, such as environmental toxins, trauma, and what's between your ears, which is your mindset. And there's something else. By changing your mindset, you can change your physical biology. 
What is that telling us? Well, that by healing your negative beliefs, by taking the steps to rise up the scale of self-love, you will be able to, for the most part, control your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual health. I don't know about you, but knowing what I know today is that changing the way you react to situations, people, and the dialogue in your head is the course of action that I believe needs to be taken to live the life we are desiring. I want to share an exercise with you, and this is a share, uh, an exercise I have been doing for a very long time. It has given me insight into the way I talk to myself, the words I use, and how I ran my life. And so are you ready to hear this exercise? All right. Our negative words, thoughts, and or actions do not manifest immediately. Are you aware of that? It, what spirit gives us is what I call the seven second delay, something like the sensors use in TV. And it's in that short little window that we are able to stop the negativity from going into the ether and coming back around, as I mentioned before, like a boomerang. So when you realize that you've protected, projected either outwardly or inwardly, a negative word, thought, or you did something, say these words three times, clear, delete, clear, delete, Clear delete. By saying clear delete, it does two things. The first of all, the big thing, is it stops it from going into the universe, all that negative energy. The second thing is that it also makes you aware of your negative patterns. And our objective is to change those negative patterns. When I first started doing this exercise, I think I said clear delete more than I said in almost anything in any conversation and you can say it out loud or to yourself. That's how deep in the negativity weeds I was. As I continued to practice and became familiar with my patterns, my patterns began to change. My negative self-talk made a complete 180. Now don't get me wrong, I'm still human, and as much as I have a lot of control over my thoughts and actions, I still have those occasional slip-ups. And it's in those times where not only do I say clear delete, but I give myself the space and grace to bring forgiveness into the situation. Alternatively, the Ho'oponopono prayer is as powerful as clear delete, just a little longer. But when you find yourself thinking, saying, doing something negative, immediately stop and say, I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. God forgives me. And you can say it in any order you want. This just happens to be Dr. Len's order. Another area where you can experience great change is in being grateful. We've heard this theme throughout the course of the day and having a gratitude practice. Gratitude is not only an emotion, but it is also a mood and a personality trait that if you don't have it today, you're able to cultivate it. Gratitude is an appreciation and thankfulness of all things you have and what you do and the outcome of the experiences in all areas of your life, no matter how large or small. So a Psychology Today report states, and I paraphrase, that over time, gratitude boosts feelings of happiness, joy. It cultivates and supports physical, emotional, and spiritual health. Their studies have shown that when you practice gratitude daily or multiple times a day, your negative words and emotions shift. With a gratitude practice, you will find your mood lifting and feeling of joy eking into your heart daily. Your depression and anxiety will dissipate and you will go through your days feeling wonderful. By developing a gratitude practice, you will feel the power in it. The changes may be subtle, as it was in my case, or it can be more apparent. For me, when I started my practice, I didn't really feel any specific changes happening because I was doing so much internal work. But one morning as I was walking my dog and saying my prayers, which always start with my gratitude statements, I realized that I was like really happy and joyful. And I was like, I felt like I was floating down the street. I found myself starting to wake up every morning, singing and dancing around the house as I got ready for the day. And when I realized about my newfound joy, 
and that by adding the practice into my prayers, it raised my frequency. And as my frequency raised, everything around me seemed to get brighter. I felt more flow in my life. I began manifesting more and more of what I desired. Starting this practice isn't difficult. You can start with either stating out loud to yourself or writing down a minimum of three things that you're grateful for every morning, evening, or any time of the day you choose. You can make the list as long as you like, but when you're feeling stuck, three things might be all you can come up with. It's not about the length of your list, it's about the emotion and frequency that your appreciation conjures up. Quoting Alan Cohn, gratitude is like faith. It, uh, excuse me, gratitude like faith is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it grows. If you're in a place where you're feeling stuck and you don't know what to be grateful for, or if you, you can offer appreciation for the bed you slept in, for the roof over your head, the clothes on your back, the food that you eat. It can be a feeling, it can be an experience, you can be grateful for it all. The list can go on and on, but I think you've got the picture. If you are someone who might be struggling or have had a big loss, it might be really hard for you to conjure up three things. But being grateful for the roof over your head, a hot meal or a pair of socks is a big deal. Today, I just scratched the surface on ways for you to begin your journey to self-love or to go deeper into the journey you've already begun. There are literally thousands of healers and hundreds of techniques to help you unload the issues that are weighing you down and holding you back from the life you desire and are divinely meant to live. My Scale to Self-Love will be on my website, which is Marla Goldberg, and Goldberg has two R's, dot com. And I invite you to print out the scale and as you do your work, revisit it so you can actually track your progress. You will see your trajectory, not only on the scale, but you will feel it. You will feel your life shifting into the joyful, abundant, and fulfilling life you have always wanted and dreamed of. Remember what the airlines say about putting on your oxygen mask first. There's a reason they say that, because if you, you, you need to help yourself first. That's what investing your time and resources into your journey is like, putting on your mask. By you investing in you, you will be like a little seedly growing into the big, lush, and abundant plant. And if you're not willing to invest in your mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual well-being, then you'll continue to live in your own personal Groundhog Day, having the same experience and results happen over and over again. Know that I truly believe that you are worth the investment in you. And I believe that every minute and every dime you expend, that you will reap the rewards of, and the bounty that come with your conscious decision to climb your own scale to self-love. I promise that if you do that, your life will change. Like any program, like a new diet or physical fitness routine, the more you do it, the more you'll achieve your desired results. It's no different with your life's path. To learn oops, more about me and how I can work with you, please check me out on my social media, my website. I would appreciate you listening to my podcast on my YouTube channel of the same name, Guided Spirit Conversations. And check out my book, My Effing Long Journey to Loving Myself, A Guide to a Shorter Path. I want to say thank you so much for your time and your attention. Thank you. So grateful.